Well, I'm going to start by saying how much I enjoyed the film. I literally, I watched oh. it this morning, so it's very fresh in my mind, but it was... Oh, uh, that's right. So this is, to give you a little insight, just to... to, to the, the toughest critic, critic, sorry, is my wife, mm. and she sits there in the same room. She's a lawyer, and she just never yeah. interacts with the movies I watch, and she just pulled her headphones off because from her work, turned around and went, this is really good, and then put her headphones on and turned around again, so... <laughs> that is the review I've been waiting for. I've been waiting for for not only just this since this movie came out for for decades. What a what a sweet <laughs> yeah, yes. This is really Your good. Who's not even really watching it, but she could tell. She could just tell. That, um, that is that that is really that's a true compliment and a lawyer no less. Uh, they're hard to get. They are. They're really hard to get. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I well, one thing that sort of dra- um, drew me in when I saw this movie, and I saw a film last year called Saint Francis as well. Mm-hmm. And it was tackling the kind of inner psychology from a woman's perspective about childbirth and how thrilled are you that we're having this open dialogue and 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 looking at the anxieties about about childbirth because I think there's, there's this kind of old-fashioned feeling that it ought to be like you're pregnant be happy but that's mm-hmm. not always the case is it I yeah I mean I mean I've, I've said before you know it, it, it's 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 cool that it's a refreshing take but it's also unfortunate that it's a refreshing take because because, you know, obviously it's a portrayal of a, a mum to be that is kind of absent in, in films and television, you know, and it, that what, what that is, is a, a, a complex, complicated, re- like quite real character who is obviously conflicted um, uh, about how they feel about a complete upheaval. But yeah, no, I think, it, and that, that's, so yeah, it is exciting um, that uh something has been written uh with such a character that is like i think what what's really exciting is that you know the movies come out in new zealand is that so many people have connected with that and so many um you know uh women who have had had children you know parents at all have been like oh my gosh this is exactly how i felt this is the anxieties that i felt and felt like that i wasn't you know feeling the right feelings and that whole idea of not feeling the right feelings and it's like well what are the right feelings there are no right and wrong feelings there is a there are feelings that people are expected to feel in 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 that scenario um which are the feelings that you know that the, 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 you know it's 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 like incredibly flawed women <laughs> are rarely portrayed um in in film and television and also it's 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 rare, rarely portrayed as like as the lead character as the as the kind of hero of the story so that was really exciting to be able to play um uh, that character and have such like a quite sensitively written um version of that character because you know there's so many aspects of this character that are like quite unlikable and quite like oh my god she went quite far with that <laughs> so um i'm glad i'm glad people uh have not just gone oh god what a what a what a yeah this is this woman is mad they've gone oh yeah i can see a bit of myself in her so yeah it's good it was really nice i could see some of myself I mean, obviously i'm not yeah. a, a pregnant woman but yeah. i well yeah. not yet but i'm mm-hmm. um but but, but, I, but i but i could connect with is i'm 32 years old and we are do you, would you think that yes. my generation we're at quite it's quite a unique sort of um generation in a sense that but people sort of before us there was more of a a, a, part, a tangible path so it'd be come out of school maybe go to college get a job get married have a kid whereas we're in this kind of year this kind of age group where there's no kind of path set mm-hmm. out i've still got half my friends still live with their parents yeah. do you think do you, do you think that's quite yeah. a good thing to explore on screen as well this idea this well, like yeah weird group it's weird time well no but it's exactly what you say I mean I, I feel it totally I mean I, it's a lot to do with like choice paralysis isn't it and that our generation a, a generation afforded all of the opportunities to do whatever you want and live your dreams and do that and there's actually something quite restrictive of, not restrictive but there's actually um there's something difficult about that paralyzing about that in a way of going oh every option is available to me which option should i take and every option that i take i am missing out on something else and that's exactly what this is i think of of, of choosing the path of going okay i'm gonna um uh, start a family means that it's the death of, of a thousand other lifetimes or a thousand other options in your life and um and i think you know generations uh, b- b- like above us i uh, haven't had those choices and so haven't had the conflict of going oh because the options weren't available to them which um so we're 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 like it's like we're kind of um it's like we're spoiled by our choices um and i think that's it's definitely what the character kind of experiences is that you know to choose a certain life it's the death of of so many other versions of her life and for her i think she um 
kind of conflates that with the death of her her personality, which is like this adventurous person who could who has the option of doing everything. And the irony is the fact that she doesn't do anything, but she loves having the option. And having that freedom taken away from her feels like quite scary. And I, I completely relate to that in that, you know, I um I think you're a, we're a generation where we're taught to like dream big and then and then having to realize like oh sometimes your dreams don't come true and then you have to settle for things and expectations have to be lowered that's quite confronting um so yeah i think uh, i think there's certainly something relatable to people beyond people who you know who have the ability to have children or are thinking of having a child i think uh generationally i think yeah millennials probably would connect a lot with both zoe and tim in the film um because it is a big decision and and um people of our age you know decided to have families i mean like my mom like you know she got pregnant she was 29 she just did it like those parents just like you know they fanged out a baby they're like this is happening oh god it's gonna be stressful my life's gonna be hell for a while but okay that's life and i think people of our age like we th overthink it so much and we feel like we have to be prepared and we feel like there's this pressure to be you know prepared for it be the perfect version of it Whereas like, I think there's something to be learned from the generation, you know, our parents of just going, yeah, we might mess up our kids forever, but you know, it's the way of the world. So give it a go, you know, <laughs> so it's something yeah. admirable there. We are definitely the generation of overthinkers. I think. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, I was going to ask you because I mean, in regards to what you can share in, 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 in relation with the character is, is are you much of an adrenaline junkie? Would you, could you, would, could you be found jumping, doing bungee jumping? Or is that the sort of thing that terrifies you? Hell no. I mean, that's definitely like, like there's so many things I have in common with the character and that's certainly not one. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I mean, I think I'm even slightly scared of heights. So even doing all of the tree climbing stuff, I was like, what am I doing? Cause I had to learn to do a bit of it. Uh, which is really interesting but um no i'm not necessarily an adrenaline junkie i mean i do i've done stand-up for years i think that the main way i have um you know uh, messed up my adrenal glands is is constantly putting myself in a situation where i am <laughs> anxious and fearful and full of nerves that is enough i do not need to jump out of a freaking plane to feel that i will just do 10 minutes of bad new material at, at a comedy night in london that's fine that's enough excitement for me because <laughs> so, the film's got that really quite droll uh sort of very endearing new zealand wit uh to it and mm -hmm. i just wondered about how because there is a kind of i mean obviously when I, I was first kind of introduced in many ways to that kind of type of style of comedy and it would mm -hmm. and stuff like yeah, that yeah yeah and there is something that is, is it quite self-aware in some regards the new zealand wit? because the way it's written is almost it's almost written knowing how the delivery can be really funny in some regards it's it, it, i'm just wondering about when it yeah. comes to writing comedy from as a new zealander whether you're kind of aware that maybe the delivery and tone is perceived as being quite funny elsewhere in a good way that makes yeah, sense well, i mean i mean it's, it's it's hard because you you don't notice it when you're surrounded by it you know when it's your way of life and it's the nature of your comedy and your sense of humor i mean in the same way that i think british humor is the same or it's it's hard to define it from within it but you know perhaps for me to an out an outsider it's it's easy for me to see what is you know the idea of a british it's, it's like trying to describe yourself and then someone else describes yourself and you're like hang on what <laughs> that's not how i thought so for me yeah new zealand humor like even when people are like i like dry wit i'm like i don't think we're very witty i think we're very <laughs> i think we're kind of like brutally we're we're quite brutal and brutal realists about things or we're very like we're quite low-key i think low-key is a good way of describing it a lot of our humor is like i think a slapsticky over the top um uh, form of humor is perhaps not um uh i mean you know there there there's so many different types of uh, senses of humor in new zealand all so quite like um tied to you know the culture and stuff so you know uh, uh, polynesian humor will be different to like you know new zealand farmer like fred dag like you know that kind of humor to maori humor to like you know indigenous like comedians and, and all of that stuff is so different i think but there is a real um I think ability to harness low key energy for comic effect is a real New Zealand thing. And it's such a flight of the Concords thing. And it's like kind of that less is more thing. Um, and I think it's more also like it's understanding that humor and really appreciating it, <laughs> which is, um, I think, yeah, that is our sense of humor. It's, it's self deprecation to the point of making minute, making ourselves so small 
and it comes across in delivery sometimes and saying that though i think there's a lot of slapsticky stuff in this film um and a range of kind of um senses of humor and stuff but i th- think that's a thing about new Ze- uh sorry zoe's character is that she is um she's real straight up and i think i think a lot of new zealand humor is quite straight up and and uh yeah very like what are you doing <laughs> even the idea of doing comedy to new zealand is like what are you doing <laughs> Why are you drawing attention to yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think the ratio of of, of p- talent in in per, in per population must be huge in New Zealand because you guys, there's so much brilliant talent out there at the moment from your yeah. country. Only a small little place. But mm. I mean, I, I like to say that statistically, like, oh, that makes sense. But no, it doesn't make sense statistically. It's 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 wild how talented New Zealanders are at things, and I think we are the the best country in the world. Um, and um. And I honestly, I, I often put it down to our, our geographical isolation is that we've had time. It's the same thing, you know, in isolation and lockdowns. It's like when you have time to tinker away in your bedroom, doing, you know, nothing and demanding things only to amuse yourself or, or just for the sake of creating stuff. I think incredible stuff comes out of that and incredible art and work and performances and performers. So I really do think that that aspect of isolation um and being able to just get on with doing your own creative thing is, is is a real new zealand thing so yeah i think i think that's part of it yeah i think your isolation uh, summed up mine best recently with that tweet you did where you said you're great to relax in front of the big screen after spending a day looking for a medium-sized screen Ooh. before i retire to bed and look at the small screen until i fall asleep and that's basically been my life for a year and i think you summed it up <sighs> it's the know. hackiest yeah it's the hackiest tw- uh, observation but it's so true and i just, i'm so sick of looking at things <laughs> I need to I need to listen to the podcast or something. It's well, thank, thank you for <laughs> your, your time today. I've run out of time, so I should probably head off. Oh, thank you for chatting. And I love you. Is that George Benson, your re- record oh, behind no, you? Luther Van Dross and Al Green. <laughs> Luther Van Dross. Is Al Green. It's Al Green on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good. nice. And, uh, the, the, we came down the aisle to an Al Green song, me and my wife, and then we our first dance yeah. was the Luther Van Dross thing. So we put them up on the That's wall. So they are wedding day. Sweet. sweet. What a cover. It's great. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> with the, the Lovely to meet you. you. See you later. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!